Welcome back to this channel for practice problems for actuarial exams. My name is Krzysztof Ostrzewski. You can find information about me at smarturl.it forward slash Jedi. My advice on how to pass actuarial exams is at smarturl.it forward slash pass. This video channel is at smarturl.it forward slash pass actuarial exams. Here you have information about online seminars and study manuals for exams P, FM, IFM, and LTAM that I offer. I direct the actuarial program at Illinois State University. You can find information about it at smarturl.it forward slash actuary. If you would like to offer a tax-deductible donation to support our students, please go to smarturl.it forward slash help ISU actuary. Here's a problem for today for exam IFM. The following table shows the beta and expected return for each of five stocks. So you have uh, stocks 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, betas for them are 1.2, 1, 1 0.7, 0 0.4, 0 0.1, and then the expected returns 0 0.124, 0 0.110, 0 0.103, 0 0.068, and 0 0.047. All of these stocks, except one, lie on the security market line. Calculate the alpha of the stock that does not lie on the security market line. And here's the solution. So if a security S lies on the market line, uh, on the security market line, then the expected return of that um, security S minus the risk-free rate equals uh, beta of the security S times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. That's a basic statement of capital asset pricing model. Note that if stock 2 lies on the market line, then expected uh, return of the market is 0.11 because stock 2 has a beta of 1, so it behaves like the market. So we do know this one thing with certainty that E of RM is 0.11. Then, if stock 1 and stock 2 lie on the security market line, and based on E of RM being 0.11 from stock 2, we have the equation for stock 1. 0.124 minus RF is equal to 1.2 times E of RM minus RF. So that um, we can um, get from this uh, what RF would be if um, stock 1 lies on the security market line, that RF would turn out to be 0.04. Well, now we're going to try to use all this, that the expected return of the market is 0.11 and the risk rate is 0.04. What if we use this for the remaining stocks and see what happens? Well, we plug in those numbers and the expected returns for those stocks and we get these three equations for stock 3, stock 4, stock 5 as you can see. Uh, and I have numerical versions in kind of a second column here. So those those are actually numbers that are supposed to work. Well, okay, then these three statements some say something like this, basically, that 0 0.063 is equal to 0 0.049. Well, it's obviously false. It can't be like this. 0.028 is equal to 0.028. That's correct. That's true. And 0 0.007 is equal to 0 0.007. That's true. We were told that one security does not lie on the security market line. Well, that's how it turns out. That stock 3 doesn't work. It's not consistent with everything else. But, of course, what this is saying is that the return on stock 3 is more than... In the one implied by the security market line, and an excess like that is called alpha of the stock. So this stock has a positive alpha. Um, and therefore, for stock 3, that alpha is 0 0.063 minus 0 0.049 or 0 0.014, and that's answer D. So everything works. We got answer D. Please remember this is copyrighted material. The problem itself comes from Society of Actuaries. The solution is mine. Good luck in your studies and good luck on the test.